Okay. So now we have the piece that you flared originally, the piece that you swedged, and one of the extra pieces out of your nine pieces that you have. Now, this exercise that you're doing, you're going to do for propane, which is typically your blue cans, your map gas, which is your yellow can, and then as you go into oxygen settling and B tank, you'll be doing basically the same program. All right, so remember our objective is you have to meet the standards. So therefore, let's start working this. We've swedged it, pick up the right size tool, the half inch, because that's what I'm working with. Try not to shove a half inch into three eighths, all right, it won't work. Well, it will work, but we don't want it to. Now, keep it pointed up and down, get a firm grip on it, and just twist it. And then you're going to have to twist and pull as you're trying to pull this out. Now, if you notice inside here, it's very shiny now. That's exactly what you have to have. Just don't put it in there and do it a couple times because when you go to do the final product, it's going to show. All right. Then grab yourself a uh, piece of sandpaper. And now you want to do the other side or the male end going into the female end. Now, there's all these tools out there that you can buy. However you want to do it, that's totally you. Um, in here, though, we just do it the simple basic method. And we want to be sure that it's nice and clean. All right? So, those two pieces are going to join together. All right? So now we're going to go over and I'm going to demonstrate how to go about doing this because remember you're going to do it a vertical, horizontal, and overhead for every solder joint that you have. All right? So let's just take this apart. We're going to move over here to our workbench, our big table over here. Now, You can just set these down. Now, let me explain to you here how this is all going to work. These are going to be located up underneath on the shelf, all right, because you don't need them all the time. But you notice that it just slides into the, into the vise, firm it up. You don't have to go nuts on it, all right. The thumb screws will allow you to raise it up or lower it down to the lowest setting. The nut on top will allow you to bring out the piece farther than you really need to, to be working it. And of course, the uh, uh, C-clamp, which is a flat type clamp, um, is there so it will hold the piece. Your striker is here. Always check your striker to be sure that it's in good shape. Here's one that is not. Okay, you notice that there's no more flint on that. All right, all you're doing is rubbing steel to steel. All right, so we're going to change that, and all you have to do is unscrew that and screw, ask us, and we'll give you a new one. Okay, so we've removed the old one. And now we're going to replace it with a new one. If you look at the new one, you can tell the major difference on that. All right? Just screw it right into the cap. And you don't need any tools, anything like that. All you have to do is ask us, and we'll get it uh, replaced for you or give you the equipment to do it. OK, so now there's my striker. Now remember, this is the only way to light any of the torches. If they're self-igniting, you don't need to worry about them. But if you're trying to light your uh, B tank and your oxygen settling, this has to work. All right. 
You'll have rags over here if you need them. We have the little can of oil. We have our soldering paste flux that you must use. All right. And then we have a little jar with the uh, brush on it. Okay. Just try to keep it as clean as possible. We, we go through here and wipe them down every couple days. Okay. Now this is all you need other than when you're ready to solder, braze, any sort, you have to turn the exhaust fan on. All right, the exhaust fan is located at the back door and it says fan. So you just hit the button and it works just fine. All right, so let's start very simple. We already have flux on this and we're going to take we're going to take the end of this and attach it to our pipe now this is the way that you can adjust the tight uh, the, the tension on the pipe you don't want to crush it if you can help it all right there it doesn't need to be in there real firm. All you're doing is holding it in place. Now you take your brush, you take the end that you cleaned, all right? And put the flux on there. Now you don't have to go nuts with this, okay? Just put enough on there so that it is now gonna slide right in our holding. All right, that's all you have to do. Now remember, you're going to do this horizontally, vertically, and then overhead. All right, first we'll do the horizontal, then we'll do the vertical, and then we'll do the overhead. Now, the way I'm showing you this is done for both the propane and the map. I'm not going to show you the map because it's the same thing. All right, nothing's going to happen different except that map gas is much hotter. All right, so it's I can't explain it without you really doing it, but it's like artistry. All right, if you get too far away, you're going to be there all day. If you get there too close, you're going to burn up your flux and it just turns to muck. All right, you have to be able to get in there and not be afraid of the torch. That's the biggest uh, hurdle for most people. All right, so now, knowing that, these little blue containers, toolboxes, have everything that you need in it. All right, the most important thing is the stand. The next thing, Remember I said it was blue or red, typically. Just clip that in. Then here we have the turbo torch, self-igniters. Remember that? This is the one that as you pull the trigger, it will light the gas. Just set it on there and be careful not to cross thread it because once you cross thread, then you gotta throw it out, all right? There. Always helps to look at it when you're doing it. All right. And then you should have a roll of copper. Now remember I told you propane map gas? That's the difference. But they're both here. If they run out or if you smell a leak or something, just let us know and we'll fix it. Now once you've gotten your materials out, just set the toolbox out of the way. We have our pan of water, our can of water here. This water is obtained out the back door. There's a sink out there. Now, for simplicity, I'm not going to turn the fan on because it just uh, ruins the voice over on this. So I'm going to just do this quickly and show you how it should be done. But remember to wear, use the uh, fan. 
Now, as it says in the book, I'm working with half inch, and the book says to bend about a half an inch of solder. The key to this whole puppy is that you don't want it flowing out all right, of either end. You want it brought all the way around. And remember, on this, you want to heat up the male end first, just warm it up, and you got to constantly move the torch. All right. Then come down to this portion, the bottom of the cup, and continue heating that because now if you started here, you're trying to go through two metals. Here, conductivity is going to happen. All right. It's going to warm this pipe as well as warm the inside of the cup. And when you go to this end, remember solder or flux will always cause the solder to flow or capulate all right, around this whole area in here. You don't have to sit there and you know, cut off, take a half an inch and melt three inches of solder. That isn't going to happen. All right? So what I do is I turn my fan on. Now, the thing is, is you got to get comfortable with this because you're going to hear a uh, hiss and the flame, of course, don't ever lock it into place. We do not use this button right here in the classroom. All right. Learn to use your fingers. All right. Put your finger on the trigger. And once you get it lit, try it a few times so that you know that it works and you see what you're trying to get. You see that bluish type flame right there? That's what you want. That's what you're working with. So now, I'm going to start and I gradually come in here heating up that male end. You see how I'm working this all the way around? You see how my solder is starting to, to bubble? All right. Now I'm focusing more on the cup, the bottom of the cup. All right. Now once I do that and I get it to the right temperature, that solder will just melt right in. Now, take your rag, dip it in the water, and work it around. Now, you notice at the top here, it's really, it's close, but I don't have what is known as a cap. All right. If you look up underneath here, the solder melted and formed a cap. All right. So you need to come back and with very light temperature, play with it until it lights up or heats up to a point where it just barely melts. See what I'm talking about? Oops. So, and wipe it away. Okay. Now, you notice that there's no solder coming out at the end. And we are now going to remove our pipe. And just drop it right in the water. All right, now this vice grips come out of your toolbox. This one is permanent, so try not to remove that, would you please? All right, so now it should be cooled enough. I reach in there, dry it off. All right. Now, Let's examine this. You see that cap? That's what you want all the way around it. This means that I got it too hot, too fast, and it worked its way around. But of course, as I had it in the container, all that went right to the bottom. All right? What I would do is I put a little flux on this, 
stick it back in there and put very little heat on there all right and just play with it until I can get it to look like that without using a great deal of uh, um, solder all right now this is where remember I told you you have to meet the standard all right take your little uh, vise there undo it open up your regular vise and you want to place it in the vise gently all right enough so that where you're going to cut your 45 degree angle right here it will hold but at the same time allow you to cut that now you're going to take the hacksaw which should be mounted up on the top here and place it at a 45 degree angle gradually cut yourself a slot and you're not trying to do this quick because you don't want to cut all the way through not on the soldering and if the blades are dull just let me know and we'll take care of that for you all right so you got this little crease in here all right you go over to your toolbox and you pick up the chisel now if the chisel is damaged in any way mushroomed at the top let me know and uh, we'll get that fixed right away or show you how to fix it now you see my 45 degree angle I am going to take my chisel and my hammer and just pound it now when that starts to slip like that just back it off in the vise and crimp it down all right Now, the problem I'm inquir uh, inquiring on, excuse me, the problem that we're experiencing is I do not have a cut deep enough here yet. That's why it won't allow me to peel this up. So you just go back to the garage and there you see how that happened that's a good good joint I can't even begin to get it ripped open all right when you get into a situation like this you're going to have to try to do the best that you can what you are trying to do is peel it back just like this one all right now this you see that void in there it's very little but what that means is that it got too hot all right but will it suffice yes you notice that it's all the way around all right and this is what we mean by pulling it back I'm just using another piece of scrap show you but once you have it peeled back you take your um, to a point where you can grab a hold of it lock your pliers on there and you just keep pulling it back until you observe your soldering joint all right And this is what you should be getting. All right? That's a clean joint. This is probably a clean joint, but because I have it so well uh, creased in there, I can't get it off. Sometimes that happens. 
all right? But just uh, continue to practice so that you do both the 3 8 and the half inch. Now remember, when you're doing this, be safe, all right? Work the program, all right? Place your copper in there. You don't want to crush it if you can't, if you uh, can help it by any means, all right? But when you did the horizontal, now you're going to do the vertical. The same processing. All you have to do is loosen it up, turn it to a vertical position, right. or turn, turn the pipe to a horizontal position, and you'll set in, again, the, the piece that has the uh, cup on it. Okay. So then just lock it into place and this time remember I don't, I don't have it here but this is the cup. Alright so it's already been swedged out. Now you're going to put the male end in there and remember the same rules apply. Clean it very well, insert it, use flux, insert it, twist it around a couple times. All right, that just ensures that both sides are getting uh, uh, flux. That's why you don't flux the cup. So now you're going to do the soldering, and now you're going to do it this process. Now, remember when you go to do this, you're using half inch. And you're going to be coming from the back as well as the front. The big key is once you see that solder flux start to bubble, you're right on the verge of it. You may want, wish to back off the heat a little bit, but once that takes, then all you want to do is let it cool off a little bit, come back, and adjust it so that you can get that cap on there. The cap is vital, all right? Then, when it comes time, you're going to do the same process, but overhead. Now, I don't care if you do it overhead vertically or horizontally. It doesn't matter to me. All right? But what we want you to kind of get used to is working when your arms are up in the air. All right? Same process. All right? Nothing is different. All right? Because you're going to, this is really easy. When you're trying to do this, may it be in plumbing or in HVAC, this is very easy. So you want to give yourself challenges. All right? You're going to continue doing this both in 3 8 and half inch until you meet the standards. I will tell you from personal experience, if you're doing it and the first one is really bad for whatever reason, let somebody know, one of the techs or the instructors, and we'll try to help you out. We'll look at the next one that you're going to do. If you continue to have problems and you're getting upset, what I would suggest is that you shut down the operation, walk away. All right? Call it a day, if, especially in the evening when you're working all day and you know things aren't just working out right. We don't want a Michael Jackson lit on fire running around here, all right? But you always got to pay attention to what's around you at all times. So, when you're done with this equipment, please just put it back, all right? Where it belongs, up underneath, the tables are clean. If anything breaks during the process, just let me know. We will take care of it for you, all right? All the tools need to be put back all right, in their proper location. And again, if there is a problem, you need to let us know. Now, that's 
you're going to remember you're doing vertical horizontal overhead both in 3 8 and half inch be sure that you remember all the steps when you get out here we understand that students may not remember all the steps but this should not be foreign to you if you need to watch the video come out get familiar with it go back and watch the video then that's perfectly fine you're not going to light it up until everything's done though safety equipment again glasses and gloves when you're soldering this is okay you need to have a hundred percent cotton go to savers go to goodwill get yourself a long sleeve shirt I don't need to tell you that you're not going to be soldering and brazing in open toe shoes all right um, you got to have pants on no shorts all right now you may do that out in the real world that's that's your boss's insurance policy all right not here so we secure it when you're done and just to refresh everybody's mind when you go to open this box you got to push this portion of it all right has a little catch on it I've seen people get into a, a fighting mode trying to get this thing open no need all right again now when you go to pop open this up or take it off it's going to pop a little bit all right and you may smell propane or map gas that's okay as long as it doesn't last all right now I try to enforce that these are your tools all right I ask that you take care of them just as your tools because if you throw them around and mistreat them the next student coming may find out that the tool is broken way too late all right and we don't want that to happen around here always remember to dump your water when you're done be sure everything is back in order if something is wrong let me know and we'll fix it all right now re we're going to go back over this again and understand that you're going to do it in three quarters or correction you're going to do this in three eighths and half inch do one of each before you move on to doing all of them let's say don't go do all the three eighths and then cut them open and find out they're all wrong one solder joint propane horizontal cut it open look at it have it approved go to vertical three eighths do it get it approved three eighths overhead do it get it approved then go back to the half inch now remember with three eighths between three eighths and half inch you won't need as much heat okay so please start with the half uh, the three eighths the smaller of it all right as you get done make sure that your paperwork is complete and you check the paperwork along with your soldering joints all right the instructors need to sign off on those if they're not signed off you haven't done it period so please be aware of that now you should be able to do it in propane and in map gas all right once you've done those and you're moving forward the next phase is the oxygen settling and then the uh, b tank all right the same process happens you're going to see a video me doing it with oxygen and then me doing it again with the uh, b tank I I try to ensure that the students do not get ahead of themselves I don't care if you've never done this or you got 10 years or 20 years experience 
you got to do it in a sequence because if you get ahead of yourself then we start having problems and then most of the problems are safety people are in a hurry trying to get through this don't bother so therefore I think you have the tools necessary to do what you need to do for propane and map gas All right. please if you have problems if you have questions let the instructors and myself know we're here to help you and again if you get frustrated pull back All right. it will never work guarantee you got too many students and myself to uh, claim to that alright well good luck enjoy it be safe out there.